Warpugs. Today we're going to be checking out the Fat Electrician talking about Chick-fil-A. And I'm going to be doing this without trying to get hungry. That's going to be a problem. Guys, this is the Fat Electrician secondary channel, The Fat Files. He talks about things here such as businesses, other things that interest him. And I'm a fan of that. So, with that being said, he's going to be talking about capitalism done right. Now, I don't know quite what he means about this. Um, in terms of Chick-fil-A and doing things, like, I'm not quite sure where he's going to go with this. But we're going to find out. All the Fat Electrician's links are going to be in the description down below. I highly recommend you check him out. If you're not a fan of history, check him out for the Fat Files, because they're both good. And Warpugs, check out the links in the description for my links as well, for Patreon, everything else like that. I'm trying to get things together. <laughs> I really am. But it's difficult with this being this close to the move. Let's get into this. Here we go. Favorite business model of all time, and I think that it is the epitome of capital. This just might be my okay. favorite business model of all time, and I think that it is the epitome of capitalism done right. right. Today we're talking about Chick-fil-A. It is the most successful restaurant chain in America, and it has done that despite being canceled like every five minutes for the past decade. Right. So at a bare minimum, regardless about how you feel about Chick-fil-A, you should at least take the time to understand their business model because it's really really good. And when I say it's good, that's an understatement because they're not just the most successful restaurant chain in America. They mm -hmm. are the most successful by like 10 miles. They absolutely body the competition. It's not even close. Can okay, let me break this down for you. The most profitable restaurant chains of 2023 are as follows. Starbucks with $35 billion, McDonald's with $25 billion, and then coming in third is Chick-fil-A with $21 billion. So uh -huh. how is it that the third most profitable restaurant is somehow the most successful? Well, per capita matters, right? Because yes. Starbucks is coming in first with $35 billion, but they've got 38,000 locations. McDonald's coming in second with $25 billion, but they've got 40,000 locations. Chick-fil-A is coming in third place with $21 billion, and they have 2,900 locations, okay? These other restaurant chains are 12 times larger and have roughly the same output oh. as Chick-fil-A, meaning that the average Chick-fil-A is like 12 to 14 times more profitable than your average McDonald's or Starbucks, which is absolutely fucking insane. Yes. And then it gets even crazier when I remind you that Chick-fil-A isn't open on Sundays, meaning that Chick-fil-A is outperforming all of its peers with less locations, working less hours a day, working less days per week. And we're going to get into how that's possible oh. right after a word from our sponsor. Let's Today's go. video is brought to you by Rocket Money. It is your all-in-one finance app capable of doing pretty much anything you could want. It does all the normal stuff that you would expect, like help you set a budget, monitor your credit, even track your net worth. But what sets Rocket Money apart Oh. They help you identify every single subscription that you are paying for monthly, and half the time, you forgot you were even paying for that. Okay, me and my wife do this all the time. There's always some football game or MMA fight that I want to watch and some TV show that she wants to watch, and for some reason, it's on some streaming service or app that nobody has ever heard of, so we have to go get the app, get the streaming service, sign up for the seven-day free trial just to watch our show, then we forget we signed up for the free trial, and then we're getting charged seven, eight, nine, ten dollars a month every month for the next three years, and I have no idea. Yeah. yeah because online streaming has just turned into cable again, let's face it. Is Rocket True. Money going to fix that problem? No, not really, but they are going to help you quit paying for it. In addition to that, recurring monthly payments that aren't necessarily subscriptions, so like your cell phone or your internet provider, Rocket Money will actually help you negotiate to lower your bill and save you money there too. Okay. So if you want to give Rocket Money a try for free, you can go to rocketmoney.com slash fat files. I'm going to have it also linked in the description down below. Let's get back to the video. Anyways. I'm going to put that in the description down below and I'm probably going to use it. Let's take it from the top. All right, our story begins March 21st, 1921, when this old guy was born. Well, he was a, he was a baby at the time. He was just born. It was his <laughs> first birthday. Well, his zero we birthday. We get it. We got doesn't it. doesn't make sense because technically that literally is his first birthday, but we don't call it your first birthday until you've already been alive for a whole year, which anyway, birthdays True. are dumb. Moving on. Sorry, anyways, that's true at Kathy. He is a founder of Chick-fil-A, and when he was 20 years old, Pearl Harbor was attacked, at which point I assume he thought to himself, you know what this world needs? Less fascism and more dope-ass chicken sandwiches. So, he joined the army. So he goes, he fights in World War II, fast forward, 1945, Allies win, he comes back home, crosses defeat fascism off the to-do list, <laughs> only thing left, make a dope-ass chicken sandwich. First things first, gotta have a restaurant, right? So he opens up his own restaurant, it is called Dwarf House, and it is open 24 hours a day, six days a week, 
every day except for Sunday. He's a real religious guy. He just believed in taking Sundays off. So that's okay. what he's up to for like the next 21 years from 1946 till 1967. He's running this singular restaurant that is his, getting a bunch of experience, learning, you know, doing the whole shtick. His current right. restaurant has this enormous menu. Then one day in 1967, he's working with this food distributor that offers him a deal on chicken breasts because they are selling chicken breasts to the airline and the airline can only take these little tiny chicken breasts that fit inside the little itty bitty airline food trays. So right. all the chicken breasts that he's going to be getting are just the big juicy ones. And he's like, yeah, I can figure something out. From there, he goes into his lab trying to figure out the best way to cook chicken breasts. And he decides he's going to pressure cook it inside fancy peanut oil with his secret blend of herbs and spices. And that recipe is still locked up in Chick-fil-A headquarters to this day. So he's done it. He's made the best fried chicken the world has ever seen. So he's like, okay, only problem. It's pretty greasy. Like it's, it's really greasy. It's yeah. too greasy to eat with your hands. So he's like, okay, well, I'm just going to stick it inside of a hamburger bun with butter and two pickles and make it a sandwich. And thus the chicken sandwich was born, or at least that's what Chick-fil-A says. They say that they're the ones that invented <laughs> the chicken sandwich and this was it. So he's like, you know what? I'm done with this enormous menu selling all these different items. I'm just going to sell this chicken sandwich. I'm going to rename my restaurant from the dwarf house to Chick-fil-A. And this is all I'm going to sell. And okay. The rest is history. Okay. Fast forward like 60 years. Guess what they're still doing today? They are selling that exact chicken sandwich, which leads me into the first principle of why they're so successful. They follow the simple rule of if it's not broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Okay. The chicken sandwich is perfect. Leave it alone. Nobody touches exactly. it. Selling the exact same thing that got you here. I know that sounds simple and dumb, but most companies can't help but fuck this up. That is a cheese it inside. 16 times the size of a regular cheese it. I present to you the cheese it crunch wrap. Okay, and I can get. I'm not gonna lie, Taco Bell does come out with some slamming stuff every now and then, but they miss more than they hit. Be a real life example why changing shit up and having promotional items all the time is a terrible idea. I used to eat Dritos all the time. Right. Then one day, Dritos came out with this new flavor called Buffalo Ranch Dritos Jacked, and they were the best Dritos on the planet by like 10 miles. And I probably ate a bag of them every day for several years straight. Then one day, they just disappeared and they quit making them, seemingly for no reason. I can right. only assume it's because it was driving down the sales of all the other flavors because they were the best Dritos ever. And now, guess what? I just don't eat Dritos anymore because every time I eat a normal Dorito or a cool ranch Dorito or a sweet chili Dorito, I go, oh, it's like a shittier version of Doritos Jacked Buffalo Ranch, and I don't even like it anymore. Okay, because you got to realize people are creatures of habit. I would have. Same thing with me with Cooler Ranch came out. They did that and then they took it off the menu and I haven't eaten them since because What's the point? You've already tasted perfection. Habitually eaten a bag of Doritos Jacked every day till I died if they gave me the option to, but they took Doritos Jacked away. Then they essentially broke my habit for me and I just never went back to eating normal Doritos, okay? So it was a giant mistake to have the promotional item in the first place because if they didn't have that, I probably would have just kept eating normal Doritos for the rest of my life. But no, they fucked it up. <laughs> Which leads us right into our next principle, the KISS principle. Keep, Keep it, it simple, simple stupid. stupid. And this is really where Chick-fil-A excels. Okay, let me break this down for you. Here's their entire menu. They sell chicken sandwiches. That chicken can be fried or grilled, and it can come with cheese or lettuce if you want. And then they also have chicken nuggets and chicken tenders. That's it. That's like the that's whole That's all menu. you need. And some of you are like, wow, that's not a lot of variety. I'd probably get bored if I went there a lot. First of all, unlikely no. it's the best chicken sandwich on the planet. Secondly, even if you did get to the point where you're like, you know what? I don't want a chicken sandwich. Cool. Then don't go to Chick-fil-A, okay? If you don't need plumbing work done, don't call a plumber. But if you do- It's really, really simple. Like if I'm sitting, if I'm sitting here hungry, and I have a Chick-fil-A, a Wendy's, or a McDonald's sitting by, I'm going to completely ignore the McDonald's, go to Wendy's if I want a Baconator, and go to Chick-fil-A if I want a chicken sandwich. If you need plumbing work done, you call a plumber. And if you want a chicken sandwich, you go to Chick-fil-A because it's the best chicken sandwich, okay? There's nobody on the planet that's like, man, I would really enjoy a chicken sandwich right now. And they pull up to an intersection and there's a McDonald's right next to a Chick-fil-A. Zero people on the planet are going to go to McDonald's right. for that chicken sandwich, okay? Right. None. Nobody. Chick-fil-A has picked its arena of battle. And when it comes to chicken sandwiches, they are the undefeated heavyweight champion. Which... I remember when KFC tried to compete with them for this and they lost horribly. Oh, 
honestly is exactly how you should tackle pretty much anything in life, okay? Pick the one thing that you want to excel at and just be the best in the world at it and you're going to make way more money than anybody else. Yeah. Okay, let me break this down for you. Every person that you've ever looked up to, pretty much ever, you've admired for the fact that they are the best in the world at something or they excel at one thing in particular, okay? Michael Jordan hasn't played basketball in decades, but everybody on the planet knows who Michael Jordan is because right. that motherfucker was the best at playing basketball. Okay, you've never had a role model in your entire life where you're like, wow, I just... I really look up to this person because they're pretty mediocre at a bunch of random shit. <laughs> Okay, so picking the one thing that you want to be the best at and pursuing just that is a good strategy for pretty much anything. But when it comes to restaurants, it is uniquely awesome. And here's why. Picking one type of food to be the best in the world at makes the menu smaller. And making the menu smaller not only makes your employees better and the food better, it makes the customers better. Because the menu is small, customers are going to have less things to choose. They're also going to have less things to remember. So after you've been to a Chick-fil-A like twice, you know the entire menu. And even if it is your first time there, there's less things to choose. So you're going to... And think about this. I want you to think about this too. We've all seen, we've all seen people getting torn up in a in a fast food restaurant. People getting beat up, people coming from behind counters, all that other kind of stuff. When's the last time you saw a Chick-fil-A restaurant involved in one of those things? I'm waiting going to pick one quickly and then you're going to move it along. That means the lines are moving faster. You don't have people standing there looking up at a menu with 10,000 different items drooling on themselves, desperately trying to figure out what they want. No, it's like Aldi. You have one option, pick it and move it along. Okay. So now not only are you getting a delicious chicken sandwich, you're getting it even faster in right. customer satisfaction. And there's still more to it because now on the other side of the cash register, back in the kitchen, there's less items on the menu. That means that there's less variables and less variables almost always leads to less fuck up so not right. only are you getting a delicious chicken sandwich you're getting it fast and you're getting it how you wanted it to be in the first place okay customer satisfaction is through the roof okay and at this point some of you think surely i'm exaggerating and having a smaller menu can't make the business that much better but you're wrong and we're gonna go over mcdonald's menu together and i will prove it to you all right, right. mcdonald's menu let's see what we got going on here first off we have the big mac and then we have the quarter pounder first question right off the bat why do we have the same type of meat with different sizes of patties okay right. go with the smaller patties and then if they want more meat just get Give them more patties. Don't have different sizes for no reason. It's more variables and somebody's going to fuck it up eventually, okay? Because me, the fat guy on lunch break while I'm at work, orders a double quarter pounder with cheese and then they accidentally give me normal Big Mac sized beef patties. I'm going to be sad and then I have to get my burger remade and it slows down the whole world. Okay, next order of business. Why do some buns have sesame seeds and some don't? Okay, do I care about sesame seeds? No. Does any rational person care about sesame seeds on the bun unless they have an allergy? Absolutely not. Exactly. That there's some Karen that's going to use that as an excuse to drive back around and go through the drive through again, bitch out the employee for five minutes because she's trying to get a free meal over it. Okay, right. now you've ruined the employee's day, you've slowed down the line, and you have to make more burgers, all because you can't decide whether or not you want sesame seeds on your buns. Okay, just make a decision. Okay, right. next question. What the fuck is the difference between a McDouble and a double cheeseburger? They look like the same exact thing. Oh, I see here. It's, it's one piece of cheese. That's the difference. You have a whole different... This is why I hate McDonald's. And the food isn't even that good. Has anybody eaten at a McDonald's in the past, like, six months? Can anybody tell me when no flavor existed at McDonald's whatsoever? Like, I'm just trying to figure out when that happened. ...sandwich with a different name over one piece of cheese. Okay, just pick how you're making a double cheeseburger. Do you want it with one piece or two pieces of cheese? Don't have two different options, because now I have to listen to the next 10,000 people ask, what's the difference between the McDouble and the double cheeseburger? One's cost seven cents more because it has an extra piece of cheese. Okay, that's dumb. Get rid of it. Yes. The same picture. All right, moving on. Chicken and fish, adding two more types of meat, which is more variable, so that's bad right off the bat. Secondly, the best sounding one is the bacon Cajun Ranch McCrispy. Now... Yeah, but the... There's no flavor. Oh, unfortunately, it's a limited time only oh. item. And it's probably the best one because that sounds way better than a regular McCrispy, which means I'm never going to eat a regular McCrispy ever again because I'm always going to be thinking about the one that got away, the delicious bacon Cajun Ranch McCrispy, okay? Stop doing limited time and seasonal items. Every time I lose a limited time item, it's like getting dumped by a girlfriend, okay? Quit putting <laughs> people through that. Either keep the item or don't keep the item. Okay, next order of business. Why are we adding a third additional bun? Okay, this one also has no sesame seeds. Just put the no sesame seed bun 
done on this one. Or if this bun is better, just get rid of the shitty bun altogether. Okay, then we come to this philosophical conundrum. What is the difference between the McChicken and the McCrispy? Can somebody explain this to me? That's rhetorical. I'm fat. Of course I know the difference. Okay, this one right here is where they're trying to knock off Chick-fil-A. I know right. that because it looks like they're trying to knock off Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Secondly, it comes in a foil bag just like Chick-fil-A. Right. And this is their original chicken sandwich, which is basically a frozen hockey puck that they call chicken that they popped in the microwave beforehand. Okay, if you're trying... I know I'm not the only one that used to go get dollar menu mint chickens because they were just hungry and wanted some food. You didn't go there for flavor, you went there for food. And that was it. And you always felt bad because you spent three dollars and you spent three dollars and like fifty cents, got yourself three mint chickens and you felt horrible about it. Trying to rip off Chick-fil-A, just commit to it and get rid of this one altogether. Okay, moving on. Okay, then we have the chicken nuggets. Hey, stop it! Okay, so that's two. Now we've got 10 uh, for a total of 19 different items on their entree menu. Okay, now let's just go ahead and pop over to Chick-fil-A and look at a piece of art. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight items. That's it, okay? Now, I'm gonna ding them here because that is a different bun, clearly. However, I can see from here that that bun looks like it tastes like shit. So clearly it is a healthier bun somehow <laughs> that's going with the healthier cut of chicken. So at least that makes sense, okay? Okay, moral of the story, less items with less ingredients equals less fuck ups, which makes everything move faster. And this is where I really think they get capitalism right. And that principle is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. You see, there's only 2,900 mm -hmm. Chick-fil-A's and they're not in a hurry to put up a bunch more. They would rather have one really good Chick-fil-A as opposed to 10 pretty mediocre ones. Right. And that's why one Chick-fil-A makes 12 times as much money as a McDonald's. And having this mentality allows them to focus on the original goal, which is just having good food. When you compare Chick-fil-A to McDonald's as far as opening up a new location goes, it's insane how different their mentalities are. Because McDonald's is meticulous, they go full psychological warfare mode on where they're going to put all of their locations. I I'm making these numbers up, but this is roughly what their process is. Okay. If you come to McDonald's with millions of dollars, say, hey, I want to open up a McDonald's. They're like, cool, give us the general area then they send people out to sit in potential locations and those people just sit there and count how many cars drive by click 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 and mcdonald's knows out of every hundred cars that drives by three of them are going to pull into mcdonald's right and they know that every single person that pulls into a mcdonald's on average spends twelve dollars or whatever before mcdonald's even breaks ground on the new restaurant they can predict within ten thousand dollars how much money that location is going to make that year chick-fil-a on the other hand doesn't give a shit they're going full field of trans <laughs> approach if i build it they will come okay they True. can't tell you within ten thousand dollars how much money you're going to make in your first year but guess what they can tell you it's going to be more than any fucking mcdonald's around and right. because they grow so slowly they're not like a normal franchise where just some rich millionaire dude can come up and be like hey i want to own a chick-fil-a and never actually work there no chick-fil-a owns every Chick-fil-A. They own all of it. They own the restaurant, the property it's built on, and all the equipment inside of it, okay? If you want to run a Chick-fil-A, you become an operator, at which point you get 50% of the profits of that restaurant that you run, okay? They are extremely picky about who they let run Chick-fil-A's. You almost always have to have worked there for an extended period of time and worked your way up. These people end up making over a quarter million dollars a year, and they have to have a very, very small investment. I think it's like $10,000, and it's not even technically an investment. It's more or less a security deposit, because because if this person goes to a different job or they retire, they actually get that money back, assuming that the restaurant that they were running is in good condition when they leave. Nice. According to their website, like over 10,000 people every year apply to be an operator and run a Chick-fil-A, and they pick like maybe a couple hundred. They have a less than 1% approval rate for people going through an extensive interview process that includes writing essays, background screenings, and everything else. Now, obviously, there's pros and cons to this, just like everything else. One of the cons being, while you are the operator, you're technically not the owner, so you kind of always have that dangling over your head True. Like you're not actually the owner of the chick-fil-a you just run the place for somebody else but at the same time i think that it also incentivizes all the employees that work there because there is actually a clear path of like success there's a real career there where you can actually work your way up the ranks and start making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year potentially at a job that you started when you were 16 years old working in high school making okay, like chicken sandwiches a lot to the morale and the overall culture of an entire company to actually have a visible ladder there that people at the bottom can climb up to the top because that is the biggest failing that i have seen in a lot of businesses that you know i have actually worked at and half the time people leave them they lose their best they you don't they don't lose their best story time i worked at a place and quite literally the best people were just leaving the best people would just leave because there was nowhere for them to go they we'd have new brand new people come in the door work themselves 
like and just really really put themselves out there and then they would just go nowhere because the people that were the people that were above them and around them would always be trying to protect their spots and there was no path of advancement there was no nothing of that going on whatsoever so if you went in there and you you know you made you know x amount of out x amount of dollars you were getting paid the same amount as the person that didn't care about being there that just didn't that just showed up to do the job and go home you were getting paid the same amount and you were never going anywhere and so the people that sit there and notice this they'd be out the door and we they we'd be left with the people that are just there to collect the paycheck and go you can't have that happen for too long or else you get a whole company filled with those types of people because i mean let's face it a lot of these restaurants like yeah technically you could own a mcdonald's but also i think mcdonald's charges 50 or sixty thousand dollars just as a franchise fee to open up the restaurant right then you also have to pay for the restaurant basically you need like between two and three million dollars to open up a mcdonald's so as a person working at the cash register that dream of potentially owning one i guess technically is possible but also highly highly unlikely and the yeah you have to win the lottery people that work their way up from doing dishes in the back all the way to running the store you just get a bunch of multi-millionaire assholes that want to buy 50 mcdonald's so that they can make even more money while also not working whereas chick-fil-a it's really hard to get a single chick-fil-a and then if you prove yourself and you're really really good sometimes they'll let you get a second or a third one less than 15 percent of all chick-fil-a operators which is their equivalent of like a franchise owner actually run more than one chick-fil-a and they're all highly successful so at most you're only allowed to run chick-fil-a while with other chain restaurants you can just buy like 60 of them make a bunch of money and never have to set foot in the place and then your culture sucks nobody cares it's just a giant money making machine team. right whereas with chick-fil-a's strategy even the people at the bottom of the totem pole could be like oh shit that's the guy running the show right now he's here he cares he's helping me he's been through what i've been through because he worked his way up and i think that does a ton for the culture of a restaurant or any business really and i think it's pretty obviously visible from the outside if you've ever been to a chick-fil-a i think it's the best service out of any fast food restaurant i've yes. ever been to people are usually happy and the yes. statistics support that they have half the turnover rate as a typical fast food restaurant and they pay a little bit more on average in the same vein as slow as smooth and smooth as fast this company also operates on little to no debt okay they're closed on sundays they donate to a lot of charity and they don't really like debt dave ramsey is absolutely in love with this company and what <laughs> i mean by this is unlike other companies that go and get big loans to expand they don't they save up money and once they have enough money to open a new restaurant they open the restaurant and i mm -hmm. think that this makes the entire workplace environment better for absolutely everybody because now the dude at the very top the upper management levels aren't freaking out about the bottom line they right. don't have interest payments they don't have payments they have to keep making all the time it makes a low stress environment for them which means they're not putting a bunch of stress and pressure on all the people below them and that trickles all the way down throughout the entire company and just makes everything a hundred times better so in conclusion whether you like chick-fil-a or not you should absolutely pay attention to what they're doing because it is undeniable that they are an unstoppable force in the restaurant industry they are the only restaurant to face nationwide boycotts multiple times yep. in the past decade and yet somehow they are still 12 times more profitable per restaurant than any of the other major restaurant chains and they are somehow doing that with less menu items that have less variety between them while working less hours per day and working less days per week and it all comes down to basic common sense principles right pick the thing you want to be good at and just be good at that if it's not broke don't fix it Keep right it simple stupid don't overcomplicate it along the way and slow is smooth smooth is fast just don't be in a hurry if you can apply those four things to literally any situation in life you're more than likely going to be successful at it thank you for watching best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over the fatelectrician.com quack bang out anybody hungry war pugs one of the things that i have to tell people like so often in my in my day job is if you try to make this hard you will you will undeniably make this thing impossible if you try to make it that way. It is, it's irritating to me at times how people can just fly off the handle trying to make things more complicated, trying to reinvent the wheel. When you do something and it works, when you do something and it works, you don't need to do anything.
You just don't need to. War pugs. The fat electrician has put out so much great, so much great. Just you learn about history, and in this you learn about businesses that he likes. That's a good business model, in my opinion. It's just good. I like it. War pugs. I'm gonna take off from here. Check the links in the description below, especially for that one, because I know I'm going to be putting... I, I know I'm going to be checking that out sooner or later, um, just for myself. I'm going to take off from here, and I hope you guys have a good day. I am really hungry for a chicken sandwich right now.